Hey everyone. So today we're going to be breaking down another earnings type. Uh, I'm not even going to say signal. I'm just bring something that could be interesting. Obviously, due diligence on this is going to be extremely required. But nevertheless, I think that there could be something here and it is worth bringing up to the attention. Again, I highly recommend doing additional research here because there's a reason why this risk premium exists. So, Today, we're going to be looking at Schwab, who reports earnings on April 17th before market open. That is Monday before market open. Um, this is a really interesting one because we can see just by the numbers, we have an implied versus average implied of 1.75, but it's great, right? Implied versus average move of 2.21. These are huge numbers, right? For a name with a market cap you know, north of $91 billion. This is obscene. Right? I mean, we can see we have an implied of 7.43, average 3.36, a max of 9.44, a max to the implied of like 1.2. This is elite stuff. Now, there's a reason why this is here, right? I mean, there's a reason why this is here. This implied move shooting from, you know, you know forward to north of 11, now currently trading at around 7.5. There's a reason why this is there. We know why this is there, right? The banks who got crushed, slaughtered, skinned alive from the bond losses. And if we look at the bond losses for Schwab in particular, at one point their losses were north of twenty-eight billion in unrealized losses across their bond portfolios. Which I'll have this article in the email as well, guys. Pretty interesting stuff. Basically breaks down their debt structures a little bit in depth. You had one hundred fifty billion. And available for sales securities and 159 billion in bonds that are hold to maturity on Charles Schwab. Again, let's go back to that number 28, 27.9 billion in unrealized losses. As of a month ago, you know, 91 billion in market cap. <laughs> you gotta, you know, it's definitely something interesting. However, should make note that obviously that has certainly been priced in as of late. But nevertheless, this is extremely telling because they're not the only bank to take losses. Now, they've taken losses, right? But JP Morgan's taken losses. Bank of America's taken losses. Bank of America might be the worst, honestly. We have seen their implied moves. Bank of America's has kicked up a little bit, right? Which would make sense. But if we look at something like JP Morgan, right? Not really the case at all. The market kind of just assumes that it's a titan, you know, it's fine, right? Morgan Stanley is another one, you know, same thing, titan, they're fine. You look at other ones like Wells Fargo, which at one point was even like giving notices about withdrawal requests I saw, same thing, right back down. So this kind of comes down to, is this risk really warranted, right? If you have all these financial institutions, you know, with all the eyes that have been on all of these major names for, you know, weeks and months about these issues, it, it's most likely there's really not going to be, and this is my two cents. This is why I say additional research has to be done here, um, you know, just to, you know, for individuals to make their own trades. Let me just bring this up. The initial thought process is it's relatively no. Right, you have to assume that it's relatively known that, you know, yeah, they've taken losses. And with all the eyes on it, I can't imagine that there's really something shocking coming out of Charles Schwab, Bank of America, with all the analyst coverage, people that understand everything that goes on there, front to back, back to front, inside out, outside in. It, it's extremely telling to me. So that's why I say it could be something of note. Now. If we just go through, you know, relative value, right, and just run this through real quick, we're gonna get a really, really, really intriguing ratio here, and that is Charles Schwab non-event IV10 versus IV10, or IV10 versus non-event IV10, I should say. So, just digging through this, what we're gonna get is we're just validating to make sure that hey, yep, this premium is definitely here for the earnings, and oh baby, it is. This actually is the highest earnings premium that we have seen on this basically in almost two years, right? We have an IV10 of 73, non-event IV10 of 49. 
Now, for structuring out the trade, this is going to be extremely simple, right? It's the same standard short straddle that we have always done. Now, today, we're actually going to do this, you know, with the option price calculator. So if you look at Charles Schwab, we have stock price of $51.50, right? So that's what we're going to put it as. Strikes, let's say we want to hedge the downside a little bit. So we're going to use 50 in the calculator. Expiration is going to be next week weeklies, right? So that would be the 9th, because, 19th, because they're going to see the event, which is going to be, um, uh, which is going to be next week. And then obviously, you know, we're going to, oh, yeah. And then we're going to get, you know, the event, but it's the closest to expiry. So it's the most exposed to the earnings event, right? That's the big thing. Most exposed to the event. Again, just to show this, you have earnings on the 17th, come back to the calculator. You're going to see that when I go back here to the expiration date, that's what we want. By the way, guys, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I said they're, um, oh, that's May. What, what am I doing? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I was about to say they're on Monday. So it'd be the 21st of April. Excuse me, this is a gigantic typo. Um, 21st of April, weekly expiry. So next week, weekly expiry for April, right? Because you're going to see the event on the 17th, but they're also the quickest expiry. Okay? So with all that put in, the current IV is approximately 70%, right? It's 10, it's give or take 10 days. So now interest rate zero, dividend zero. This is what we get, right? This is what a straddle is going to be trading at $4 and around 36 cents. Now, Come back here to the relative value, not of an IV10, a rough approximation, right? Now we get a ratio, we get numbers of around 49, right? So after the event, we should probably say it's around 55 because obviously you're going to have gamma and things like that. You know, there's going to be that risk of drift and things like that. It's probably not just going to fall straight to 49. So now you have $3.51. So your expected P&L is going to be that difference. And personally, guys, I think the calculator is great. That's why I just want to use that in this example. Risk factors, obviously, on this, guys. I mean, again, it's the bank. So the qualitative risk factors are there. The bond losses are going to be the biggest thing. Everyone's going to be looking at the bond losses, the debt structure, their liquidity position, yada, yada, yada. Counter argument is ton of analyst coverage. Most of that's probably known by people with the money that can seriously move the stock, right? Now, last thing I want to go over is the quantitative, right? Again, max versus implied. I'd be stunned if we saw a move of 20% on something like Schwab. It, it would be stunning. And I think that we're going to, I'm going to have a follow-up in the earnings discussion tab actually about this. Uh, when Once we get these big banks that are reporting tomorrow, they kind of get a tell. Because if they're looking pretty solid, then the intuitiveness is probably going to be, Schwab is going to be looking pretty solid, which obviously might kill this implied move, but it might not. And if it stays here, then it looks really great. Last thing I want to talk about, Stroud p 28%. Schwab has pretty much only been a real loser in the last two earning cycles in the past, you know, three years. Um, I mean, yeah, this loss here at 15% too, if you want to count that. But, you know, really it stems from just this huge blowout. But that's why we get compensated, right? That's why we get compensated for this. So that's essentially it, guys. I mean, you know, looking at, you know, the earnings EPS estimates, just, you know, going through this, it really nothing crazy here. Um, you know, obviously, I think most of this is really just fear and uncertainty because of, you know, what has happened with the blow up Silicon Valley Bank. And I think a lot of people are still living in the moment and kind of stemming away from, you know, this is mostly known. <laughs> so besides that, guys, that's all I have for this one. If you guys have any questions, obviously feel free to message me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.